What is going on everyone, Parsnip here, and today I'm going to go ahead and tell you everything you need to know about fishing. Here I will go ahead and cover everything from how to get started all the way to what you should be using late game. So sit back and relax as this is going to be a pretty long video. So let's start off with the basics of basics, and that is how to start. And this is very simple, all you need is any sort of bait and a fishing pole. So the first fishing pole you can actually get is the wood fishing pole and all you need is a mere 8 blocks of wood. You can also make a slightly better version of this fishing pole with wood and iron. Now I'll get into more details about the fishing poles later, so not that you do have a pole you need bait and for this you will need a very important tool and that is the bug net which is an item purchased from the merchant for a measly 25 silver. Once you do get the bug net and you capture a critter all that's left is to go to the nearest pool of water and get started. Now make sure to have a big enough area otherwise it won't work that means you need at least 75 connected water tiles. So let's go ahead and talk about the requirements. Though I did say it needs 75 connected water tiles, it does change for the ocean and honey um, pools of water. The ocean actually needs a huge amount of tiles, a total of at least 1000 connected water blocks, and honey needing even less than the normal water, and that is a total of 50 tile blocks. In case you are wondering, a player can actually fish in a one tile wide pond as long as it's 75 tiles deep. So if you do decide to clear or create another pond instead of naturally acquiring one, you could go ahead and make it um, not that wide but very deep. Now clearly another requirement would be the fishing pole and bait, but there are exceptions to what you can get. In order to catch a quest fish for the angler NPC, it requires fishing in the proper biome and the correct height. For the day's current quest, which can be determined pretty easily just by talking the angler where he will say either the underground cavern or just at the surface. So since we are talking about the angler NPC, let's go ahead and talk a bit more about him. So the angler can move into any house that is empty and meets the requirements. He is super easy to get and he's either in the left or right side of the map floating in the middle of the ocean. Once you find him, click on him and he will eventually move into an empty house that you have somewhere around the world. Now the really unique aspect of this NPC that is very different from all the other ones is that he doesn't actually sell anything but instead he gives out quests that generally involve catching him a rare fish from a particular biome. And as you can expect he gives out a lot of rewards. Now I won't talk about every single item but you can see all of them in the background. We can go ahead and divide the rewards into a total of about two groups you know the functional items which is items that actually have some sort of use and the decorative slash vanity items so as you can probably already tell there is a huge variety of items that you can get from rewards some are really useful while others are really fun so I'll go ahead and talk about some items that I think I should highlight. One of the easiest mounts on the game is actually a reward from the Angular Crest. So that reward is a fuzzy carrot. Now this is actually an item that you get really early on because it is a guaranteed reward that he gives you on the fifth quest. So the carrot summons a pretty fast and cute rabbit that travels at 47 miles per hour Plus, you can still attack mobs while riding it. Now, two more items that I want to highlight that is great for anyone that enjoys building, especially for people that view my speed builds and stuff like that. You'll probably notice that I myself use it quite a lot, and that is the bottomless water bucket and the super absorbent sponge. Now, these have a 1% chance to drop after you start hauling more. Uh, hard mode and they do pretty much what their name says. One has infinite water and the other one can absorb infinite water. So great for making a underwater build, uh, fishing lakes and clearing out areas of lava pretty much. Now the other item that I want to highlight and this is going to be the last item that I want to highlight from the angler is the fish costume which is not only fabulous but it drops all three pieces of the set at once though it does have a mere two percent chance to drop it's definitely worth it come on guys you all know this is worth the farm 
Next up, we can go ahead and talk about the crates, a section in fishing that's pretty big if you were to talk about every single thing in it, and I could have easily made a whole video just about it, but I will simply try to skim through the main aspects and highlight some things that I actually find useful. So in total, there are 9 different crates, each can give different loot and a different chance to obtain um, the crate itself. Now the chance to catch a crate can be changed by the crate potion which is probably the thing you'll notice that has the biggest chance to increase catching crates which it raises a total of 10% your chance to catch a crate. Now each crate gives a huge variety of items and I definitely can't talk about them all. However, the better the crate is, would be in the worst and gold be in the best, the better the loot. So expect to get things like potions and a small of random mores in the wooden crate or things like rare mounts and good bars from the golden crate. Now you can probably tell from the background but there are a lot of items, a huge amount of items, but expect to mainly get ores, bars, coins, and potions from all crates, as they only have a handful of different items, and that's pretty much all I want to highlight for the crates. You know, worse crates will get you worse ores, less bars, and less coins, while better crates will generally give you better ores, better bars, and more gold, as well as one or two different items that are actually pretty rare. So with the rewards out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the quests. So besides the biome and where you are in the world, be it underground or in the surface, there are other things to consider. Like you can catch the quest fish even without talking to the angler. In fact, you can catch the daily fish even without having the NPC. Though chances are slim considering how many different biomes there are. You can also only catch the fish if you have not turned one in today or if you have one in your inventory. However, a great way to go around this is that you can store them in a chest or a safe and continue fishing to catch more. Lastly, you can only do one quest a day, meaning it's recommended that if you quickly catch a quest fish, you place it in a chest and get some more in case you do need the same quest again in the future. Especially guys, and make sure you remember this, especially if it's in a fishing spot that's hard to get to or really far away. And you can also use the enchanted sundial in order to speed the day up for your next quest. Now this is also an item that gives or that's rewarded to you from these quests. So let's go ahead and take a look at the bait. Like I said in the beginning of the video, in order to fish, you will need bait. So you can either get bait by catching creators with a bug net or by getting it as a reward from the fishing NPC. You can also upgrade some types of baits, like combining a normal worm with a fallen star to make the enchanted nightcrawler. Now, bait essentially serves as ammunition for fishing poles. However, unlike ammunition, bait is only a chance of being consumed, which can only happen on real end and not actually when you cast. So the main thing to look at when picking bait is how easy it is to obtain and the bait power, which will influence the quality of the catch, as well as the chances that the bait item will be consumed. So bait power can vary from a total of 50%, which will be the highest bait power you can currently get. Um, the item that spawns fish, uh, the fish dukum, will actually say it has 600 and something uh, bait power. However, it can't actually be used to fish. So 50% will still be the highest. And 5% will be the lowest. Naturally, the lower the bait power, the easier it is to get bait. And the higher the bait power, the harder it is. So make sure you take that into account when you try to pick the bait that you'll be collecting. A great trick for getting bait is making a farm. You can also use a bug net during the rain near NPCs in order to catch a lot more worms than the usual. Here in the background, I'll go ahead and show you guys a simple farm which consists simply of dirt and grass seeds. You can also upgrade this farm and make it sort of automatic by adding actuators, wires, and a timer. Like what you can see here in the background. Now, there are plenty of other ways to improve what you catch and how you catch. And I'll leave a link to the Terraria Gamepedia for you guys to look at it. 
With bait out of the way, let's take a look at the fishing pose. Again, like I said in the start, you will need one in order to fish. So the first fishing pole being the wood and the last fishing pole being the golden fishing rod, there are a lot of things to consider when getting or upgrading your fishing pole. So make sure to consider things like the fishing power as well as the velocity and if it's actually worth getting. For example, making the first rod that's just out of wood is not really worth it as considering you will probably either not have the merchant or the angler so early on, which is needed for the bait. So consider either making your first fishing rod a reinforced fishing pole or wait until you have spare bars to make the fisher of souls or the flesh catchers which is made with demonite ore or the ore that you get in the crimson which I completely forgot the name. <laughs> Now there are also some poles that actually do specific things like the hot light fishing pole or hook which can only be used or not only be used but is the only fishing pole that can be used to fish in lava. Lastly you can actually get an achievement from a fishing pole but I'll leave that for later um, in the video where I'll talk a bit more about the achievement. So in total there are 9 types which they have only 4 that are craftable. The other ones you either get as reward or a NPC sells them at a certain time and things like that. Finally we can go ahead and talk about your in-game gear for fishing. Now there are a lot of things but I will talk about them all. So first and foremost you want the angler tackle bag which is a mix of three fishing items the anger ears or the angler earrings sorry guys high test fishing line and the tackle box now the bag gives you a total of plus 10 fishing power and it also decreases the chance of you consuming bait so after making the box you still can use the other items individually meaning even with the angler tackle bag you can also use the angler earrings and the angler tackle box for more fishing power and less chance to consume bait make sure you guys add both of these so you get extra fishing power and chances not to consume bait as they do stack next up we have the angler armor each piece of the set gives you a total of plus 5 fishing power for a total of plus 15 fishing power Ideally, you will have the golden fishing rod here for an additional 50% fishing power as well as the crate potion to up your chance in loot. Now, since you don't want to be disturbed while you do fish, you should also have a summoning weapon. Ideally, the star dark or stardust dragon would work great. However, if you're not that late in the game, whatever summoning weapon that is viable to you at the time and at the point that you are in the game will also work. Okay guys, so that was pretty much the main part of this guide. Now let's go ahead and talk about tricks and tips. Starting off, let's talk about making your fishing life a tad bit easier. A great thing to have while fishing is a safe spot to fish. So ideally, if you are patient enough and you can create houses, you want to do that but with teleporters and in the houses or right next to the houses, make sure that it's near a fishing spot at a different biome. I actually took this step a bit higher and not only did I make my own houses, but sometimes I also made a lake to fish in below the house or next to the house or anywhere around the house. So this brings us to another thing that will help you in the long run. And that's making your own lake. Guys, if there's nothing close to you, even if you are by the biome you need, feel free to make your own lakes. Next up we have hoarding quest fish. So for those of you that don't know, instead of always having to move each day to a different fishing spot, when you are on a fishing spot that gives quest fish, be sure that you catch more than a single fish. You can do this by putting them in a chest or anywhere that's not your inventory. So once you catch the quest fish, put them in a chest and try to catch them again. By doing this, you avoid having to travel far. If it's the same quest and it comes up again, you already be prepared as you have more than one fish. So the next step is if you do, and this one's pretty much luck, but if you do catch a reaver shark, which is a pickaxe in case you didn't know, you can skip a lot of the pre-hard mode terraria as you can actually mine hellstone with it. 
Bait can also be placed in your ammunition slot, so in case you are short in space in your inventory, make sure that you toss your worms or whatever bait you use in the ammo location. Lastly, by using crates in hard mode, you can go ahead and get better loot. Ideally, you just save up on your crates in pre-hard mode, and then once you defeat the wall of flesh, you go ahead and open all the crates for better loot. And last but not least guys, we have the fishing achievements. Quite possibly, in my personal opinion, the harder to get achievements in Terraria. I myself actually don't have all the fishing ones, so let's go ahead and just start talking about them. A lot of the achievements are actually the same, but in bigger numbers. For example, the servant in training, good little slave, trout monkey, fast and fisherous, and the Supreme Helper Minion are pretty much all the same achievement but with higher requirements. The first achievement being to complete your first quest for the Angler and the last one being to complete a grand total of 200 quests for the Angler which will take a ton of time and effort to complete. So make sure you guys start off early if you're gonna go ahead and try to get the achievements. Next up we have the achievement that I did talk about a tad bit in the beginning of the video which is the glorious golden pole which you unlock by obtaining the golden fishing rod as a reward from the angler. So guys that's pretty much everything you need to know about fishing. If I missed anything or said anything that is incorrect or even if you don't agree with it be sure to tell me in the comment section below and I'll try my best to explain and answer as fast as I can. And as always thank you all for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.